In that case, let's uh, call the meeting to order at uh, 501 and hand it over to Darius. Oh. All right. We're calling the meeting to order at 501 for reorganization. I just repeated that because I didn't have the recording going. So we'll start with reorganization. In so doing so, um, do I have a nomination for chair? I'll nominate Greg uh, Gottschalk for chair. Second. I have a first and a second. Any other nominations? Seeing none, closing nominate closing nominations. All those in favor of Greg Gottschalk being chair. Uh, do we need to? Do I we guess need to be the ball. Yeah. Uh, Jessica? Yes. Peter? Yes. Keith? Yes. And Greg, will you accept? Yes. Okay. Right. You are chair. I hand the meeting over to you. Outstanding. All right. Uh, and per Jessica's excellent suggestion, we're going to uh, put off the rest of the reorganization and uh, plow ahead until uh, hopefully Megan can join us. Um, can I get a motion to review and approve the minutes of May 17th? So moved. Excellent. Second. I'll second it. And Jessica, you got the uh, the motion. Excellent. All right. Jessica? Uh, no discussion. Yes, to approve. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Peter? Yes. Keith? Yes. Greg? Yes. All right. Approved. Uh, financial statements and, uh, <coughs> and warrants. Shelly? Hi, everyone. Uh, I emailed you out the expense reports. There were 11 warrants signed totaling $70,204.53. Those were reviewed and signed electronically. Uh, and I, I'm happy to take individual questions on those expense reports, but I wanted to explain in particular tonight is that we have a higher year-end balance than we typically would have in a year where there's no restrictions on the spending. Um, which is a good thing. You know, the last two years, we've really been tight on our budget with COVID. And um, two years ago, actually uh, sort of closed out the budget so that only emergency and necessary purchases were made. And last year, we were really conservative as, as well. So it's been nice to have communications with Ben about overages on funds and be able to purchase some additional educational equipment and supplies and materials that we normally um, wouldn't buy at this time of year, sort of like wish list items, including some small equipment and things for building maintenance and cleaning, um, and then tackling some other minor, nothing capital, um, but minor building maintenance and grounds related items. So that's been nice. Um, and Ben and I are still in conversation about that. Uh, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because the balance is pretty significant currently over where it would be at this time of year in a, in a um, typical year, but we've had significant staffing changes. Um, some of them natural where we had uh, people personnel changes. So whenever that happens, there's typically column movement. Sometimes it's in our favor. Sometimes we end up high hiring over budget. Um, but we did have a particular instance where we had some savings on a few lines because of personnel changes. <clears throat> um, I believe that was with PE and the new uh, speech language pathologist for both of those positions. We're also $18,000 under budget on our substitute line because Ben has been creative and in, in class coverage and using IAs and, you know, throwing himself in the mix when he needed to. Um, so there are some funds there as well. And then professional development was not fully spent. Uh, and the other major line item was for um, summer support, which was related to last summer because we did have some other grants, ESSER, one and SR2 in particular that we were able to tap into for summer support. So I just wanted to give you an explanation of, of what the significant overage is from. Um, those pieces add up to about $85,000 currently. Uh, if you look at the year to date report, it shows about 143 available, 143,000 to the end of the year. That's actually gone down. We're at about 125 currently because we have had monthly expenditures that are typical. So that number will decrease slightly, but my guess is we're going to be somewhere around 100,000 at the end of the year. That's a um, excess budget. Uh, we typically have some type of reclassification every year. It's just usually not this significant of an amount. 
Um, so Darius and I are making a recommendation that we reclassify the expenditures that were put on the special education revolving fund, which is $22,000. And we uh, build up that account again, currently based on um, the income that came in, which was just a partial year for one student. We fully expended that account. I think there's about $550 in it. It would be nice to have some savings in that account in the event that we have unforeseen special ed needs or an out of district placement, or if we continue to see increased transportation costs. Um, so that would sort of be a, some, I don't wanna say slush money, cause that sounds like it's fun, but I guess emergency aid outside of our school choice, which we also use, as you know, as that emergency fund. Uh, so the recommendation would be 22,000 for the special education revolving and then the balance outside of whatever Ben doesn't spend between now and the end of the year and then normal expenditures be put into school choice. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've had a lot of building uh, repairs come up, uh, unexpected things, of course, never fails. Um, you know, and we have a lot of capital projects on the horizon. so. You know, there's certainly things that we could spend that money on right now, but I think there's a lot going on at the school. I know there's a lot going on at the school already for capital, and I and I think we're at a point where we need to try to tackle some of the things, save up that money, and wait and see if we can do some additional things next year. I would be concerned about uh, our capacity to take on anything further right now, given what we already have planned between ARPA and then other small things happening. Um, so that's the recommendation. I am more than happy to take questions. Peter had a had a couple of great questions as always, which I appreciate getting ahead of time. Uh, so let me take a look at that. Um, you talked about, yes, the projection, Peter asked about the projection that I sent you, uh, which is to end the year currently at 423,000 estimated in school choice. That is before we take into account any of these savings and reclassification. So that number would be higher, you know, probably likely around 500,000, perhaps just shy of. Um, so it's a really good spot for us to be in. I just wanted to be transparent about it because it is a lot of extra money that we, you know, normally wouldn't have. Any questions about that before I talk about the other two pieces that Peter mentioned because they're not related to this topic in particular? Any objection to that plan of reclassifying those expenses to school choice and special education revolving? No. So, Peter, go ahead. I, I just want to say, Shelly, I think what you're saying makes total sense. Um, and, you know, as usual, just really appreciate the clarity you bring to these things in terms of. Um, you know, us un understanding uh, what the issues are and the very, very good advice you give in terms of what to do. So, yeah, I think this is, I think you're doing exactly right. Great. So we'll proceed um, and then we'll have an update on where things land in September or, or late August, whenever we meet next, when we're back to school. Um, so the other two things, if I can just address really quickly, Peter had a question about um, payroll. And yes, payroll is fully in the system. So those numbers that you see on the financial report are actuals, which is why you're seeing overages in some accounts and then savings in others. Um, there may be some fluctuations because there's always stipends that come in at the end of the year. For example, we pay out two days of personal days per the contract for any teacher who doesn't use their personal time, those aren't in there yet. So, you know, salaries and wages could fluctuate slightly. Um, but the good news with this is that next year, we'll have a really clear picture from day one of what our salaries and wages are pending any changes. So I'm very excited about that transition to having everything in our database. Um, <clears throat> anything else on that, Peter? And then the other piece was about school lunch, which is, you know, one of those things that's kind of looming over us for another year here. Um, federally, I'm not aware of any, I think there were a few congressmen or, or women trying to put forward for the USDA to continue with free and school lunch for next year universally. I don't believe that's going to happen. I haven't seen a whole lot of traction with it. The state is pushing for it. 
uh, uh, other than hearing that they're asking for it, I don't have any details. I'm not sure if that means they're matching federal funds or if they're trying to uh, supplement programs. I don't even know what the number is that they're discussing, actually. Darius, I don't know if you've heard anything else in your superintendent's groups, um, but I, I, I'm not holding my breath on any of that yet either. No, it's just they're discussing and it's being pushed back and forth. So the, the positive side of that is because we had ESSER support this year and very limited expenses on our um, program, we've been able to build up our reserves pretty significantly. We have about 90,000 that I'm projecting to go into next year, which is good news because if lunch is not free universally, we'll go back to cash students and faculty paying and then uh, supplementing with the free and reduced lunch population, which in Sunderland is a little bit larger than some of the other elementary schools, but it's still not going to be anywhere near the numbers that we've seen for revenue this year. You know, we've had um, a lot of work and, and good positive things happening in the cafeteria across the district. And I think that that's a testament to some of the changes that our food service director is trying to put into place. And with everyone receiving, you know, three plus dollars a day for reimbursement, it's it's added up to quite a bit of money. Um, so we'll be able to support the school lunch wages that we're putting back on that account moving forward. And then uh, this will be a fund that I'm keeping a close eye on. We really don't have a good snapshot over the last one, two and a half years of what school lunch revenue could look like. You know, I can go back historically and see what the numbers look like and make some guesses, but um, this will be a good test for us to see where things land. So we'll have to keep our eye on it. But I don't have anything else, Greg. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, back before COVID hit, it felt like our lunch program was pretty much you know, getting on steady feet. So... Yeah, I expect we'll uh, we'll do well, no matter which way this breaks. Um, all right, let's see. Principal's report, Ben. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so last Wednesday, we held our end of the year, excuse me, that, that was the rain day. Um, so last Friday, we had our end of the year spring carnival. Uh, which is a long-standing Sunderland tradition. This is put on by the hardworking member, members of our PTO. And the carnival this year featured a bounce house, dunk tank, food, face painting, and music. Yesterday, once school let out, um, a group of volunteers started the playground demo. And so we were able to um, disassemble the main play structure and one other piece of equipment. And then the town came in today, the highway department, and uh, uh, removed the asphalt walkway and the majority of the P-stone safety surface. And the rest of that will happen over the course of this week with the contractor lined up to start next week. Uh, on Friday, June 10th, we held our final all school sing of the year. This event always allows us to honor our departing sixth grade students and any retirees that we might have. Uh, this year, longtime first grade teacher Susie Wells was honored um, after she's retiring um, with many years of teaching under her belt at Sunderland Elementary School. Uh, she started off as an IA and began in first grade when the roof collapsed. And so she started her official teaching career as a first grade teacher in Waitley. When she moved back into the building, um, she's been at the same grade level and in the same classroom ever since. So uh, we had a couple opportunities to honor and celebrate Susie um, in the past week or so. And it's, uh, it's a, definitely a well-earned and deserved retirement. And... Um, what else? Uh, graduation, sixth grade graduation was held last week, last Thursday. Um, SES graduate Joe Thompson, um, who graduated from the class of 2016, was the guest speaker. And also our sixth graders, uh, with the extra funds raised um, over the past couple of years, 
are using those funds or hope those funds will go towards a kickball field on the back playground for the kids. So I've met with a contractor over the past couple of days. I've reached out to the um, CPC who, um, and we have some leftover funds from the back playground project that can help supplement the cost of the kickball field. So we're looking to have that um, ready to go before school starts up again in the fall. And uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the public library in town donated a free book um, to all students at Sunderland. Um, a nice way to send them off into the summer. And then there's a, a, a local business um, in town, Dale Frank Financial Group. And um, they've always been very uh, generous with their monetary, monetary donations. They donated some money once again, and we're planning on using those funds to help support a welcome back to school event in the fall. So lots of good things to close out the year. Outstanding. <clears throat> All good stuff. And yeah, definitely extra thanks to Susie Wells for a fantastic career and teaching lots of kids to read. All right, let's see. Public comment. Do we have any public comment? All right. No. Sounds like, sounds like not. Um, unfinished business. The MASC policy updates to Section A. We have to vote tonight, today. Yep, this is your, you had your first reading of this. Um, you can, other committees have just voted it as the um, MASC Section A recommended changes as presented and voted them as one group that way. I move that we uh, uh, vote the MASC policy updates as presented. Second. Second. Nice. Any discussion? All right. In that case, Keith? Yes. Megan? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Peter? Yes. Greg? Yes. All right. Policy section J updates. Uh, so again, you can vote them as a section. These, there was some minor changes sent out to folks um, where the, the nurses made some edits, um, you know, primarily the one of it said six months, it said 12 months. Um, and there was some, just some minor language that had impact, but um, doesn't really change the, the direction of the overall um, policy, so to speak. So if you should have got those, but again, looking for a vote on those. <clears throat> I'm happy to move Motion that. To yeah, yeah. Motion to approve the MSC recommended changes to section J. As presented. Second. Does you know, have to clarify in that that those are there are some language from MESC, but there also are languages from uh, Meg Birch and the nurses. So it's not clear just it's not where the other ones were straight from MESC. This one is not. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the updates to section J as presented. Thank you. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? All right, uh, Jessica. Yes. Megan. Yes. Keith. <clears throat> yes. Peter. Yes. Greg. Yes. All right. Let's see. Back to the agenda. <clears throat> Foundation statement on anti-racism and equity. So this is a, a vote to approve the to endorse it essentially. To endorse it, we are going to put it in our policy handbook because it gives an to our, our to our policies in this area. It'll also be put on our websites um, in the appropriate places as well. So, um, yeah. So I'm looking for an endorsing vote. Move to endorse the foundation statement on anti-racism and equity. Outstanding. Can we get a second? Second. Outstanding. All right. Any discussion? All right. In that case, uh, Peter? Yes. 
Jessica? Yes. Keith? Yes. Megan? Yes. Greg? Yes. All right. This is reorganization subcommittee. All right. Now, we're getting back to the, the whole reorg business. Is that where we're at? No, that's for the uh, regionalization subcommittee. Regionalization. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back and just do the, the whole list yeah. that we uh, moved on from. Megan, we only elected Greg and Chair. We didn't do the subcommittees yet. We were waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. Or the we didn't feel it would be fair to give you all of them. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Certainly. All right. So we need uh, a nomination for uh, vice chair. Move Jessica Corwin. I'll second. Any other nominations? All right. In that case, uh, Megan. Yes. Peter. Yes. Keith. Yes. Greg. Yes. Jessica. Yes. Outstanding. All right. We need a uh, secretary. Nominate Peter Gagarin for secretary. Second. Any other nominations? All right. In that case, uh, Jessica. Yes. Keith. Yes. Megan. Yes. Greg. Yes. Peter. Yes. Outstanding. Thank you. Frontier representative. I nominate Keith McFarland. Second. All right. Uh, any other nominations? All right. Jessica. Yes. Peter. Yes. Megan. Yes. Greg. Yes. And Keith. Yes. Outstanding. <clears throat> All right. Union 38 representatives. Didn't, didn't we have a discussion at this process last year that the rest of these were actually under the the uh, chairs, right, to just oh, appoint them? I you guess know, just, just tell people? You get to a point and obviously you can, you can solicit people's uh, desires or lack of desire for any particular thing, but yeah, yeah. It just, it's, it's your power rather than a committee vote. Is that That's correct, Darius? Okay. Oh, I got the thumbs up. All right. Um, interest in uh, un being Union 38 representative. I'll just say I, I've been it for the last three years and I'm happy to rotate out. Okay. I don't mind doing it, but I feel like this is something where we can share opportunities. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of there too. I, I could go either way. Uh, well, well, Keith is already on the committee, so it's only he, between... He could be a other, double voter. It's only it's a, between the other four of us and we Two of you can't get off because we. Yeah, yeah. And actually, doesn't the chair have to be one of the reps? Didn't Fair I hear enough. that in the Deerfield meeting last week? I'll, I'll be on there. That's that's fine with me. All right. I think it, I think the list looks real good the way it is. Does that mean you don't want the responsibility, Peter? <laughs> it, and just a clarification: the chair doesn't have to be on it, but okay. when I went to Deerfield, um, Ken had to be on it because he's the chair of the committee. <laughs> Got it. Okay, that's what I, that's He's what like, I until they have a new chair, I mean, they can, that was kind of what he was trying to say. Like, okay, you can. So. Gotcha. It. Okay. Uh, in that case, go ahead. No. Go ahead. In that case, uh, let's let's leave the roster where it is. Uh, Union three representatives: uh, Jessica Corwin, Megan Arquin, and Greg Gottschalk. School council liaison. Jessica, you're currently filling that slot. How do you feel about that? Happy to continue if nobody else wants it. Outstanding. Collaborative liaison. Currently, that's uh, you, Keith. Are you good with that? Are you looking to mix it up a little? Uh, I'd be happy to have anybody else do it if they want to do it. Anyone else? You want to talk about what the collaborative is a little bit? Uh, it's a group of districts that meet with, um, what's the, the term, nonprofit group based out of Northampton. They provide um, professional development services. They also 
oversee um, Mount Holyoke Academy, Heck Academy. They it's through the special education law with the state, and they provide services in all of our districts, all all throughout not only Western Mass, the state. They have meetings maybe once a month. Um, most of those meetings are concerned with their budget, which is like everywhere. Um, it's uh, it's if anybody would like to do it, I'm, I'm happy to continue doing. It, but if anybody is interested and finds uh, is um, curious about it, I'd be happy to step aside. But I'll do it if, if nobody wants to. Any takers? I'm real happy with Keith continuing because. He understands what's going on, and I think that's a real bonus for us. So, all right. In that case, collaboratively is on Keith McFarland. I don't believe we have any negotiations scheduled, but still, in all, we have or do we? No, but you should. You need to have someone on in case something comes up where there's a major conflict. All right. Uh, so, Jessica, you got that position currently. Uh, you happy to continue in that role? Anyone else interested? All right, Jessica Corwin uh, for the negotiations team. Uh, Policy Review Subcommittee Representative. Megan, you've got that one currently. How's that working out for you? That's working out fine. I'm happy to keep that one. All right, Policy Review Subcommittee, uh, Megan Arquin. And, oh boy, for the big fun, the Regionalization Subcommittee. It's a terrible name. I, I just, I don't know, it just dawned on me how terrible that name is because that's not what it really is. It sounds like we're trying to regionalize. And I already had that conversation with Conway where I'm like, no, this is really a, it's also in our agenda to do this tonight. So you might as well just do it now because it's next yeah. agenda. But it's the um, Union 38 Superintendency Agreement Subcommittee to develop the, a new superintendency agreement, not a regionalization subcommittee. So I will try to rename all those. We'll rename it. will be the first order of business of the subcommittee is to name it better. But it is to look at how, um, it, it explains the last meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. So you just kind of explains, you know, how. In the absence of unanimity, how would we uh, hire, fire, et cetera, a superintendent? Correct. Um, I, I thought you were. I thought you expressed an interest in this possibly last time, Greg. Well, I, I expressed uh, a sense of, of uh, acceptance of inevitability. Oh, not, not really, but uh, I'm happy to jump on this one. And Keith, go ahead. Keith, I, you know, if you don't want to, if you if you're not really looking for it, I think I I would um, express some interest in doing it because I think there's an, a lot of overlap with Frontier because of we're meeting with all the other communities in the first place. So. Um, it's up to you, but I would be willing to do it too. Outstanding. Um, in that case, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you uh, take that one. All right. Oh, and Harris, can you tell us who else was appointed to that one from the other towns? Um, well, we to call me on that, Jess. Um, I think it was Ken and Deerfield, but that's Ken the only one. Yep. Um, in Conway, I think it's Phil. It is Phil. And then Waitley is Bob Holla. Thanks. Okay. And one more. Oh, go ahead, Peter. No, you go with your one more first, and then I, I got one more, too. Uh, it's the town park representative. Right? Uh, we're, again... There are three trustees of the Sunderland Town Park. Go ahead, Keith. I'd be willing to do this one as well. Really? Outstanding. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I think they're, 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 they're paired with the fire department. I'm over there all the time anyway, so I think it would be an easy yeah. easy goal for me. That may be a, a good fit then. Yeah, because that's uh, that's exactly where there's some overlap between the trustees and the uh, the fire department. Outstanding. Thanks for taking on everything, Keith. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> God, no, 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 no. Um, I got I got one more, and I just sort of thought it ought to be added to the list. It's not relevant right at the moment. And that is that the, the town's capital planning committee that I'm a member of now, the actually the structure of the committee is such that uh, this one position on the committee is 
for the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, uh, for example, one is for the library. And when the person who was the representative from the library decided to step down, then the library trustees met and decided on a replacement person. So that uh, uh, you know, I'm obviously not going to be doing it forever. And so at some point, uh, I'm happy doing it now. But at some point, if there's a replacement or if, you know, whatever reason, then it would be up to the committee to appoint, to select somebody and then notify the town of that and um, so on. So I just wanted to get that on the list. Absolutely should be added to the list. Because that's a, that's a, you know, that's a significant uh, uh, position to have because it affects a lot of stuff at the school and the town. Long range, big impact. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So good. Um, so to the extent that that's added ad hoc, uh, Peter, sounds like you'd be uh, willing to, to continue in that capacity for now. Yes. Outstanding. All right. Peter Gagarin, representative to the Capital Planning Committee. All right. And that brings us to the superintendent evaluation summary vote. And it sounds like it's uh, essentially endorsing the, uh, the evaluation summary of the superintendent. So you can do what you want with it in the sense that if you give, we're given a summary by the uh, by Ken and Bob Halla, um, and then as a committee, you need to give me a, a um, evaluation rating overall. Um, that has to be voted. So you can accept it as is, or you can do yeah. it. You have to be transparent. You can do whatever you want with it. You could also say you don't accept it. You want to do yeah. something different, or you can accept it as is, as presented in uh, in voting proficient rating as a recommend. I'm going to move to accept it as presented. I'll second that. Do we need to attach approval of the? The rating of proficient, does that need to be explicit or is that implied? I, I believe the the proficient is in is as presented is, is part of the how it's presented. So okay, thanks. Uh discussion. Go ahead, Peter. Um I'll just say for for my own uh 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 evaluation uh that uh, I in most cases uh, rated uh, Darius's what's the top one exemplary because I really do feel that that is the case um, but I'm not quite sure there's enough it's a clear enough thing to make our overall rating exemplary um, and so I'm not even though that's what I feel it should be I'm not going to push that because you know I think I'm perfectly happy if we uh, if we leave it at proficient, um, it still is, you know, he's been a great superintendent. And uh, anyway. I'll say this. Um, I'm always slightly leery of, you know, everyone who gets evaluated in a job in some sort of formal organization, they have these rubrics, uh, which mean what they do. Sometimes they're overlapping and it's hard to, uh, you know, when you're dealing with an individual person under specific circumstances, uh, sometimes the things that you want to say don't necessarily fit neatly into the rubric. Uh, I also have found it uh, very easy to work with Darius on a wide range of uh, challenging issues. And I've I found that uh, teachers, administrators, uh, the staff... It, it's overall an excellent team, including especially uh, Shelly. Uh, and I'm, I'm really grateful for the, uh, the hard work everyone has done and the excellent results. And I, I'm not also, like Peter, I'm not going to get too hung up on this particular rubric, but uh, you know, state my gratitude and, and kind of leave it at that. Any other comments? All right, go to a vote then. I, I, I just have a, yeah. a, a thought, um, not so much about the content of this evaluation, but um, I recently redid the charting the course uh, with MISC and they covered superintendent evaluation. Um, and they said that after three years in the district, the superintendent can switch to every other year evaluation. I don't know if that's something 
we also need to vote on. I mean, I guess if the other towns didn't do it yet, we should wait and do it whenever they do it. But That could be a joint meeting agenda item. I think we could wait and do it in two years the next time. I mean, that could come up at uh, the joint meeting in October, at which point we wouldn't have. It's not like we're going to be starting the process right away for the next one. It could certainly be socialized at the regionalization uh, subcommittee. <laughs> All right, in that case, uh, Peter? Uh, yes. Keith? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Megan? Yes. And Greg, yes. All right. New business, DESE COVID testing update. Yep, so I, I did send out to all of you the, the memo that uh, we received from the Department of Education kind of explaining what they were doing with testing for summer and for next year. Um, and, you know, for the summer, we've already uh, kind of already lined things up and already ordered and have received the testing. We're continue to have, um, you know, uh, symptomatic testing and testing take-home kits for families involved with our summer programs and staff members. And then, you know, they did announce that the next fall, they're not going to be paying for any testing. Um, however, they still recommend symptomatic testing. And um, right now, I, in, a, in, my, in my superintendent's report, I kind of just outlined the right now, the, the purchasing of those tests is, I'm hoping to see some changes coming. And I, I hate to use the word assume. I'm going to assume that'll happen, but, you know, we're superintendents are already planning on trying to find different ways to purchase in bulk because if you don't purchase in bulk, it's $20 a test and $20 a package, $5 a test. Um, we backed it up. Right now, it's um, ten dollars a pack for two for two packs. There's five dollars a test. You have to buy them in a double pack, and you have to buy a pallet of them in order to get them at that price. And so, right now, we're you know superintendents are talking about doing bulk buying and doing that kind of sort of thing for those districts that are going to do symptomatic testing. So, um, I'm already in conversations with that, and also the collaborative is talking about maybe being a bulk buyer. Also, being this is with on combines. Combines could change at any time. In the sense, the state could find another contract with another. I think can find another contract with another vendor that could be updated. That was a, you know, the, the prices that were done this spring or late winter. Um, so anyway, there is costs and a lot of things to figure out um, regarding how testing will be in the fall. Um, and so we're waiting to get more information from the state on that. There's the, you have to register as a, as a testing site. Um, we have to find out if we're going to have to re-register all families that want to be involved with testing. And right now it looks like we're going to have to. Um, originally, they were going to make the summer do that, and they switched gears on that as well. Um, so, you know, those are the kind of the planning that we'll have. And we'll also see which, you know, what COVID looks like come this fall. So that, you know, that kind of stuff will come back um, before you for, um, you know, it is, I don't think it's going to be a lot of money. You know, we did look at some of the numbers. It's going to be a few thousand dollars to be doing symptomatic testing. Um, you know, I also want to have conversations about what the town can do for, I say the town because I know Deerfield did, was able to get some funding and some testing kits and be able to distribute them. Um, it'd be nice to see what else can be done in other towns if they, testing kits can be made available to families because we did find a lot of home testing caught, test, caught COVID before it even came to school. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the, you know, looking at what COVID is in the fall, you know, so but then I just wanted to give that update, you know, because um, it is a significant move by um, DESE and um, DPH in the sense that they're not providing funding for testing. Jessica? So I'm clear that DESE is not providing the funding for this. Are, are, what, are they providing guidance? Are they recommending that we continue symptomatic testing? Well, according according to this, they are. So, um, you know, this one is page two is missing on this particular handout. Um, yes, that they're you know they're recommending that schools you know continue symptomatic testing and you know use some of the COVID money. Basically, was what was told use some of your COVID money to purchase tests. So, um, yeah, that's where they're at. Okay. Good, thank you. I, I support continuing symptomatic testing even if it's out of our own pocket because. That's kind of our last tool for pre preventing outbreaks in the school. And right now, we we did order enough that we'll be able to we'll have enough carryover. They kind of hinted at it, like you know, make sure you order enough. They, there's parameters which you can order in size of programs. Of course, we went to the far end to order as much as possible, so that we'll have leftover tests to start off the school year, even if we don't secure um, 
you know, the, the purchase before you know, the end of August, we'll have enough to start off the school year um, with those, those summer tests. So. Outstanding. All right. End of school calendar, spring conferences. So this um, next year was an oversight that we put, um, we put parent conferences on the Thursday and Friday of, let me just pull up my calendar, make sure it's in front of me here. Um, moving forward here, which, which landed on um, Good Friday. So on the 6th and 7th is when we had the parent conferences and uh, the 7th is Good Friday. Um, this is kind of, it was brought to my attention by both the association and parents that um, it really becomes a date that is, makes it difficult scheduling for many of our families. So I'm proposing that we move those half days to the week prior, the 30th and 31st. Um, it was either that or the week later. The week later would be the week, the week, the Thursday and Friday before vacation, which is not probably not ideal for parent conferences. So, uh, moving into that last week in March, actually, I don't think it's a bad thing. Mark is a long, March is a long haul for teachers, and to have a little break in the <coughs> somewhere near the end of that month, it wouldn't be a bad thing either for teachers and families, students, and such. So, just looking forward to uh, approve that that small change. It's not listed as a vote. Do you want one? It is a change in the calendar, so yeah. All right. Yeah, fair enough. I'll I'll make a motion to approve uh, moving the uh, parent teacher conferences back a week. So second. second. All right. Let's see. Jessica. Yes. Peter. Yes. Keith. Yes. Megan. Yes. Greg. Yes. Okay. Edward C. Damara, donation of fifty thousand dollars. So this is this is very exciting. So um, I was re, I was in contacted last week by um, by Kristen Baker, um, someone who's in the community who works at the Mary Lyon Foundation. The Mary Lyon Foundation is a foundation that helps people um, donate um, to different organizations. Um, and Edward Demura, or Edwin, is known um, by people maybe in the community. Um, has donated, had set up with the Lions Foundation to donate a considerable gift to Sunderland Elementary School. Wow. Edwin went to Sunderland Elementary and then went to Frontier. Um, so this is the reason why um, probably he sought out Sunderland Elementary. And he would like to give $50,000. Um, and there are there is there are lines attached to it. And the donor allocated the gift for budget enhancement to purchase equipment, technology, books, and or supplies for direct use by students. And shall not be used for budget relief purposes or in lieu of tax support. So, really, just about enhancing learning by, um, um, you know, the purchase, you know, using that money to, you know, get equipment and technology. As I just said, he also, um, while it doesn't affect this committee, I just want to say it for those in the Sunland community listening. Um, he also did a ninety thousand dollars endowment scholarship um, to be. Um, given for students, uh, for scholarships, frontier students, pursuing post-secondary education and having a need for financial aid. So he created the, the endowment scholarship to be managed in perpetuity and distributed every year. So to continue, um, um, so just a wonderful gift to, to both both school communities. Um, and Peter, go ahead. I just wonder, could you read that list of, I think it was four different items that could be used for? Uh, you know, I'll, cut, I'll cut and paste it and send it to you. That well, I can say it a lot. The, uh, to, the, the gift to enhance to the purchase of equipment, technology, books, and or supplies for the direct use by students. Thank you. Yep. And there is a contract that the Lions Foundation has sent over. Um, they want to make sure we sign and they put my name on the contract. So they'll be approving me to sign the approval of these funds, but that we will follow this, that we will follow his requests. And we use this money. And Ben, Ben was already talking about, you know, we've already had a conversation. And I don't know, Ben, you want to just kind of chime in about kind of the direction you want to, you're thinking about going with this? Because I think it's an issue. Yeah. Um, so over the summer, um, plan on meeting with the uh, in-house strategic team at SES and um, present this opportunity to, to them, get feedback on um, what is going to be the most uh, how we'll make the best use of these funds. So, um, you know, there'll, there'll be a process. Um, it, it won't be just kind of 
wheeling and dealing and a, a yes to everything, we'll we'll come up with a, a definite plan. Keith, uh, a question and, and like a comment, but uh, the question would be approximately when did Mr. Demar attend Sunderland Elementary? That's an excellent question. Um, he did pass last August, August 29th of 2021 at the age of 71. Okay. So then, um, that's, that would make him, that would make it probably 60 years ago. Okay. Um, 11, 11 year old in sixth grade, uh, 61 years ago. Yeah. Um, and then I just, I would hope that whatever been the, 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 the group that you'd be meeting with, it, it could be used, uh, in a way to affect them as many students as possible. Absolutely good feedback. And I think that's what Ben was also, he didn't want to just, you know, the administration make a decision. He wants the teachers to be involved with that um, and also have some sort of equitable process, not just this, the first squeaky wheel gets the, gets, you know, those kind of things. And then what can impact the whole school community? So, I mean, it's a substantial, there's no, I don't believe there's a timeline that has to be done in time, you know, so we, you know, I think we can put some time and thought into it. Um, it's not like sometimes like we're, hey, it's in a year, you have, you got to spend $5,000 as fast as possible. This, you know, we can put some planning and thought into, you know, what programmatically we can change or, you know, things that we need um, outside of what we've already provided in the budget. <clears throat> Outstanding. Exceedingly generous. And thanks to the uh, Damara family. Um, Yet, after so many times where uh, Ben, you, it's hard to find the money that that you need for something. Here's something that says, you know, spend it on something for the kids, uh, completely outside your normal budget. So, and I just had a just also a clear those who ever knew him. This was something that he set up prior to his passing. Um, so he had met with the Lions Foundation and set up this. Um, you know, um, I think he had an illness and he knew. Um, he had to um, take care of, pack up the house, the house, so to speak. And he he did set this up, and this was his wish, not just his, not just his family alone. But so I'm just putting it out there. That's also um, it's nice to know that um, his wish was to to get this money to us. Thanks to him and them. All right. So uh, I don't have any reports. Any committees meet last month? Peter, go ahead. Well, they, the agenda calls for a vote on this. And, and oh, I'm agenda. sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, are, you, uh, are you looking for a vote just to... Authorize Darius to accept, to sign on our behalf to accept the gift and the terms. Authorize superintendent to... To do what? To accept the gifts. To accept the gift uh -huh. um, in terms there, too. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Peter. So I'll make I'll make such a motion. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right, Megan. Yes. Peter. Yes. Keith. Yes. Jessica. Yes. Greg. Yes. Unanimous. All right. And there will um, be some sort of communication back to the family or something of, you know, gratitude or. Yes. In, in fact, there is some language about um, uh, communicating back what it was, what we spent the money on. Good. So there is actual, you know, that's what the Lions Foundation does. And so just being out there to families who may be in that situation, they don't know how to do these kind of things. The Lions Foundation is out there or they can contact the school directly. We can also I'll let families know. Um, and when you say the Lions Foundation, you mean the Mary Lions Foundation? Okay, I just want to make sure I had that right. Yes, thank you. Yes, there are different Lions clubs and right. There are Lions that are spelled differently. That right, it's spelled also charitable. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. Thank thanks. you. All right. Um, any committees that have met recently? Reports. All right. Um, Um, the collaborative. I was unable to attend this month's meeting. All right. And the superintendent. 
I just wanted to say on the on the rec for the record the you know, that Donna Hathaway, who's um, served um, as executive executive assistant to the superintendent since 2007, has decided to retire and plans on retiring um, this summer. And so I just want to you know again committee to committee um, going through thanking her for her years of service. She does a lot of a lot a lot of work behind the scenes to make these meetings happen and the paperwork. And as you know, she bugs you guys constantly for. Um, to kind of manage all the different moving parts of the five committees. And so just want to say, you know, thank you um, to her. And we are in the process of um, trying to find someone to fill her shoes. So um, yeah, just putting that on my, on my, was in my superintendent's report. I just want to say that a lot. Thank you. <clears throat> Indeed. Peter? Yeah, I just like that. I deal with Donna a lot in terms of, of getting these minutes out and she's been amazingly helpful. Um, in a bunch of ways and you know she's just a really fine person and she her attitude has always been helpful and positive and so on and it's been a delight to to have gotten to know her some and to you know dealing with her regularly it's just you know she's just great couldn't agree more same with the the agendas it's uh her help has been invaluable so wish her well and uh hope she enjoys her retirement all right, I don't see much need for executive session. Uh, and so I guess we'll take a motion to adjourn. Go ahead, Peter. I just got something I just wanted to raise. I, we did the, I should have brought it up when we finished up with the, uh, you know, appointments to the various positions. And, and that is that, is there a reason we do this at the June meeting and not at the May meeting? Um, I know the June meeting, you could say, well, it's in line with the school year. On the other hand, with the elections, you know, some years the elections, there's no change in the membership. Other years there are. And then suddenly we're at the May meeting and, you know, maybe we don't have, uh, you know, an, uh, an officer because their term is over and they haven't run for re-election or something like that. And so are we sort of, I just was curious what the thinking is and whether we should consider moving it to the May meeting. It's a really simple process. Is Donna looks at, has an agenda for there's a set agenda for the year. Right. And, and so what she does is when she looks, she goes, okay, you got regionalization next month. And she puts it on the agenda and she kind of tracks year to year. So once we moved it to May, it automatically got cycled into May because probably um, school committee was after a certain election, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's how it gets kind of put there. But you're absolutely right. If the chair was to uh, not be reelected or, you know, chose not to be reelected, Greg, of course, um, you know, and um, you're right. We would have at the first, we'd have a meeting without the chair. You're right. So there are some committees that wait till actually September to reorganize as well. Mm -hmm. They just, they just say, you know, we start the, that's kind of like to finish out the school year. You start the new year fresh and you find out what people's schedules are and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, it's done kind of both ways. Um, so it's up to you. It's, it, it's up to, I guess it's up to, I guess you could look ahead and see if, if someone was not running in particular for the chair, if was not standing for reelection in the year, then you would just go ahead and schedule it for May because you would need to deal with it. Uh, I know the select board in town, you know, elections on a Saturday and their Monday meeting right after it is when they reorganize and elect officers for the next year. So they're not waiting at all. And um, right. see, that sort of seems sensible to me, but I just crossed it out. We can certainly do it that way. I think it's more of a, you know, watching three different, like you said, town meeting, the election, some people had the election the fall at town meeting or the day before, some were after it. So it's it probably more me not paying attention to that kind of thing. We can make that happen next year. If you remind me as well, that'd be great. I'll okay. put it in the notes, but. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds reasonable. And I, and I guess the other thing was, I didn't know if you, um, Shelly had said that there's a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of projects going on at the school now or, you know, either in process or planning for them and so on and so forth. And I always think it's good to, you know, get updates on that stuff from time to time so that can you like, you know, maybe at some point over the summer sort of, well, you know, here's how we're progressing because yep. then also we can share that with the folks in town hall and, you know, that's good politics. Will do. Okay, thanks. Will do. Motion to adjourn. Second.
Megan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Keith? Yes. Greg? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Whoa, 556. Awesome.